Chrissy J with Stitch in Heaven and welcome back to Schoolhouse Dash. This week we are going to do a very simple star. We're going to do the friendship star. So it looks like this. Um, the friendship star is nice because it's just an easy way to make a star and it's just so pretty. We have um, two stars in the quilt, two friendship stars, um, and they are going to be on each side. So one here, one on the other side. It's just like they're hugging the quilt. How friendship just kind of nurtures us, they're going to be on the sides. So I um, hope you enjoy this. Just, be, just um, make sure you do post your blocks in the album that Anita provided on the Facebook group because we love seeing your your blocks and we are actually we're still giving away prizes every week too so that makes you eligible for a prize and please if you will just do a hashtag schoolhouse dash that will let us know that you posted and we'll go and look at them um, also there's a little bell on the bottom of this video if you will just click on the bell then you will be alerted when we post a new video we hope you enjoy the friendship star and here's Mitzi. All right, welcome back. So next up is one of my favorite traditional quilt blocks again, and it's the friendship star. Now, let me show you where it's at on the schoolhouse dash. It's this block right here, and you're gonna have a total of two of these in the quilt. So it's a nine patch again, but it's a little bit of twist on that. So we're gonna now work on our half square triangles as we're coming in on these. But again, it's a three by three, so it's still a nine patch. It's just a little bit of a mixing up, kind of like how we did with the, the nine patch uh, chain. So the first thing we're gonna do in making this is gonna be make our half square triangles. Now there's a lot of different options for you on how to make half square triangles. I'm gonna take you through my favorite option. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get out one of your marking pencils or pens. Um, my favorite I use all the time are the sew line. This is the air erasing. So once I mark this, it's only gonna stay on my fabric for a short period of time. Remember that if you go to mark things well ahead of time, the marking is going to disappear. So you wanna make sure that you mark and then you're using it right away. You've got a little bit of a window, but ask me how I know when I came back the next morning and all my markings were gone because I didn't realize I was using the air erasing one, but it is a favorite of mine. So again, these are the sew line. You can get these right there at Stitch in Heaven. So this uh, block again is gonna be on the parchment and the white of your island batiks. And I'm gonna start here with my parchment and I'm gonna use my marking on that fabric. You can put it on the white either way because we're not gonna cut on the line too when it comes down to finish those half square triangles. So no matter you know where you're marking at, it's gonna be cut off. Um, so if you don't have an air erasing, that's fine, but definitely keep these in mind. So what I've done here is I've put my, my parchment piece, my square right here, and then I've gone ahead and lined it up so that I'm able to draw a straight line from one corner all the way down to the other. I'm using one of my Creative Grids rulers for this as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Let's see here, so I'll make sure my, I can get tip to tip and I am just going to draw a straight line right down. Very carefully and make sure I'm really nice and straight. So it makes a good diagonal line on there. Now I'm gonna do it with my other one because for each block you're gonna need two of these large, and this is the larger in the parchment. You're gonna need two of these. And make sure I'm lined up, take your time, make sure you're good. And the Creative Grid ruler does have a line going across it to help you kind of line up on your edges to make sure you get a nice straight line. Okay, perfect. Again, it's air erasing, so even though I've got a really dark purple line, it's gonna be gone before we know it. Now next up, you're gonna take the matching size in your white, and I'm gonna go ahead and stack my parchment on top of the white, just making sure all of my corners are lined up and met together. Okay, and position your fabric over. You're gonna put your quarter inch foot for your quarter inch seam allowance on that line. So for example here, I'll show you on this one since the other one's already under my machine. I'm gonna line up to where the edge of my quarter inch foot is on the edge of my line. That way I get a quarter inch seam on each side of my line once I stitch them through. So I'm just gonna line that foot up for a quarter inch seam. Let me stitch down that line using that line as the guide on the edge of my foot to make sure I'm keeping that consistent quarter inch. Okay. And cut my threads. 
and you don't have to cut your thread. You could pull them just through, raise your foot up and release your tensions and pull them through. And I'm going to turn it. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side of my drawn line. So just stitch that super quick to do. And since I need a total of four, I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other piece that I drew my line on also. So once again, I'm taking my fabrics, putting my parchment on top of my white so I can see where my line is. Corners are all lined up nice and even. Drop it down. Go down one side. Okay. Cut my threads. Again, you could pull them all the way through if you didn't want to cut them, that's perfectly fine. Just be sure to release your tensions when you do that. You can do that by raising your foot. Down the other side. Okay. I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors here. So basically what I've got, you can see, is I've got a quarter inch uh, from that, from my drawn center, I'm stitched a quarter inch on each side. Now I'm gonna cut down the drawing, uh, draw, drawn line. I'm not gonna cut my my stitch lines, of course. Okay, so I'm just gonna easily and make sure I'm staying very focused on that. Cut those in half down that diagonal. Let me do the same with the other. Easy through there. There we go. And that's gonna give me those triangles. So once they open up, I now have parchment and white together. So going to bring out my iron. I want to get a good press on this. Okay. And again, I do give a uh, press on my seam and my threads before I do open up. I'm going to press these to the dark side, which for these being the parchment and the white are going to be not too much of a difference, but the parchment is just a tad bit darker. I'm going to go ahead and give those. And I've got four of these for each one. Remember, there's going to be two blocks. So all in all, you're gonna make a total of eight. There's two. There is three. And my last, my fourth. Okay. Now remember I said this is basically a nine patch, right? My iron's getting heated up again. So I'm going to grab the rest of my fabrics here and your directions, of course, are on your lay for your layout or on your book, but we will go over them as well. So you're going to have four of your white squares. Lay those out here. It's the other one. Okay. You have one of your parchment that's going to go in your center. And then make sure they're set in the right direction. You're going to want to lay these in. Now, before I do that, I like to trim off my corners. Um, it just adds unnecessary bulk otherwise. So after I've given them a good press, before I, before I would stitch them, I'm just going to trim these corners off real quick. So we can just get those out of the way. You're perfectly fine. Now I'm only, only notching off those corners because there's no need to add that bulk into it. And I'm just looking back at my directions, make sure I lay everything in the correct way. Because it's easy to get those twisted and go in the wrong direction. And let's see, yep, that way. One more corner, set of corners to come off. Okay. And we are there. I'm just gonna throw my corners away. No need to keep those. And you can kind of see that it's kind of starting to make that friendship star. Again, we're a nine patch. Okay. So no big deal there. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting, putting that together. So I'm going to usually how I always do with mine are first and second go together on that row. I'll stitch all those. We'll press and then we'll come back and add the third piece. So I'm going to go ahead and start sending these through. And you know, whichever way you like putting them together is fine. If you like putting the whole row together of that block, totally fine. Do it whichever way you prefer. I like doing it this direction. I feel like I'm just a little bit faster if I do it this way. But I'm a fast quilter, so 
Either way you do it, it's all going to go together the same. It all makes the same friendship star. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim those. Let me get back to my ironing pad. All right. Now, this one I'm going to do a little different. Now, normally you always hear me talk about I'm pressing the dark side. These I'm actually going to press to the solid piece um, just because I don't want to add any extra bulk or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and press these over to the solid. You can press whichever direction you want. But I like pressing them at this stage so I can go ahead and get them nice and, and clean and even for putting that last piece on. Okay, so there's two rows. Here is my third. Let's get some good heat into that. Press it nice and flat. Okay. And then I'm going to come in and just add this last set onto the rows. So I have three rows that are going to make it. Make sure you're still lined up. You didn't get anything mixed up and turned and twisted around. And you can always reference back to your book. I always keep mine right here beside me. With these block of the months, I like to keep one notebook just for them. And I, I use the clear pages and slip my directions in for that month. So it's all right there, ready to go and close by. And then when I'm done with the whole block of the month, I know exactly where it's at. So if I ever want to do another one with it, it's all right there, ready to go. All the pages are together. So again, we're sticking with that quarter inch seam all the way through the quilt. Every piece is going to be a quarter inch seam. So make sure you're sticking with it. This quilt gives you a great opportunity to really hone those skills down and make sure you're staying good on your quarter inch. And again, this, this quilt is great for everything from a beginner, intermediate. If you're an advanced quilter, you just want to take a break from having to overthink some quilts. It's a great opportunity for that one too. And who doesn't love these Island Batique fabrics? They are beautiful. All right. Again, I'm going to press to my solid piece on this one. It's what I've found that is my preference. So there's the top row. Here we come for the middle. I'll flip that over so I can lay it over easily. Get some good heat in there to it. And last but not least, the bottom. Okay. Make sure my alignment is still all good. I've got it where I need to be. I'm going to take the top and the bottom row. I am going to pin where those seams will butt up. Now, with this particular one, because I pressed to the solid, even though some of the solid is white, um, it's going to butt those seams up really nicely to where they just come together and you're going to have a nice crisp, crisp corners. It'll look great. And I'm only throwing pins in right there on those corner pieces where they all meet up and where my seams are going to meet. Because I really, for me, I don't really need more. Otherwise, I don't, I don't like having to pull too many pins out while I'm going. So this is working out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put that through. I'm going to stop to pull my pins because we do not want to run over our pins for sure. Stick with those quarter inches on your seams all the way through. You know, the nice part is I'm using a very neutral color on my Aurifil thread. So by doing that, it's, it blends in really nicely, whether it's on the white side, it's on the parchment, even on, even on my lighter colors. Um, of those island boutiques and those, those dark turquoises and blues, it still, it blends in really nicely. So find a good color that you like that matches uh, or gives you really close with any of your quilting. If you go with that, it'll help to really kind of keep your, keep your colors down. Obviously, if you were going to take like a black thread and use it on a white fabric, it's going to show through. There's just no getting away from that. So if you keep your, keep your colors more neutral to whatever colors you're quilting with, it will certainly help. And so for this particular block of the month, having all these, you know, gorgeous whites and parchments, going with a really good neutral color thread will really help you out there. Okay, just making my last 
seam going in for my friendship star. I'm going to stop in there to just pull those last pins out because I definitely do not want to run over my pins. Let those out of the way. Last but not least, give it a good press. Make sure those seams look really good. My iron was heating up to give me some good steam. Okay, and then I'm going to fold that back. Let me just take it right over there. And because I put some steam in, I can actually kind of hand press it down to make sure it's nice and, and straight. Okay, one last set. Okay, and we can come right in. Just give it a little bit of a press in there. Make sure everything's going the same direction. We don't want it to bunch up on the back. And whether you choose to finish your quilt or you send it off to a long armor, trust me, your long armor will greatly appreciate the fact that you took the time to press on your seams and make sure they're all going, you know, as smoothly and as, as low on your bulk as possible. It really does make a difference for when that machine, when that quilt goes on to the long arm. All right. Friendship Star is done. So on this one, you've got two of these to make. You saw they're quick, they're simple. Again, it's just, it's another nine patch is what we're working with, but it's a different design. So once you get that done, again, it's gonna be on your side pieces and it's on the other side too. Beautiful block and get ready because as soon as those are done, there's more coming your way.